Welcome to Little Big Book by Chance L. Landry, honoring Native American heritage. We are going to journey through the mysterious and enigmatic Nazca lines etched into the ancient canvas of the Peruvian desert. Many questions persist. Were they created to leave messages to Creator? Were they astronomical calendars, prayers for water, or alien runways? In this exploration, we embark on a unique journey, an indigenous perspective that seeks to weave together the wisdom, stories, and traditions of the people who have lived on this land for countless generations. Near the Nazca Lines is a city by the name of Kawichi. It is an ancient 1,500-year-old ceremonial center associated with the Nazca culture. It is located in the Nazca Valley of southern Peru and situated about 17 miles or 28 kilometers southwest of Nazca. Kawichi was a major religious and administrative center featuring large adobe structures, plazas, pyramid mounds, and platforms. The architecture at Kawichi is distinct from other Nazca sites, characterized by its monumental scale. It is important to recognize that ancient societies frequently integrated practical and ceremonial aspects into their sites. Kawichi may have served multiple purposes, including communal gatherings and agricultural activities. I believe that these gatherings at Kawichi would have been just as important and significant as the grand solstice celebrations held at the Mayan Pyramid of Kukla Khan. The Nazca people's ability to harness and manage water resources enabled them to engage in more than just occasional ceremonies. Kawichi was mysteriously abandoned around 500 AD. Visitors to the Nazca region often include Kawichi as part of their exploration, gaining a deeper understanding of the cultural and religious practices of the ancient Nazca people. The Nazca Lines are a series of ancient geoglyphs located in the Nazca Desert of southern Peru. They were created by removing the reddish-brown iron oxide-coated pebbles that cover the surface of the Nazca Desert and revealing the light-colored earth underneath. I propose that these ancient Nazca markings are depictions of tribal clans and bands and the lands from which they hailed. The Nazca lines etched into the earth also served as a tapestry woven with the stories of different origins and creation narratives from various tribes. Beyond specific events, I envision people making pilgrimages to this sacred place regularly, celebrating clans, bands, and places of origin and life itself, and expressing gratitude to Creator for the gift of existence. Indigenous tribes gathered here from across the continent, converging and sharing the diversity in their origin stories, fostering a sense of honor whenever tribes convened and shared their unique narratives. There was never a struggle for one tribe to impose the idea that their creation story was the correct one. Instead, they respected the unique stories of each tribe. These stories detailing their origins formed the basis for the creation of clans and bands and where they were from that continue to exist today. The key point here is that each tribe's creation story defined their identity and provided a connection to their roots, leading to an integrated acceptance of diverse narratives without conflicts over which story was deemed correct. Essentially, their tribal stories clarified who and what they were and where they came from. The clan and band names were crucial for establishing identity and origin. If they were not from a specific clan or band, the place of their roots would identify the group through animals, fauna, 
water, or other representations of origin. This practice ensured that individuals without a distinct clan affiliation could still express their genesis through symbols. Additionally, these symbols carry their own origin stories and creation narratives, further enriching the meaning behind the Nazca lines. The fervent would gather and have their clan, band, or place of origin etched onto the Nazca Mountains, proclaiming, We were here, leaving their mark for generations to remember. Their symbolic clan signature would identify their personal stories and, when suitable, would point the glyph in the direction from which they came. From this indigenous perspective, the colossal scale of the Nazca lines serves as a profound purpose to evoke the memory of a sacred place where the Nazca ancestors once connected to one another. The ancestors left their marks for future generations to never forget where they truly come from. The etchings act as a testament of proof that they have been here since the beginning of life, establishing that Creator gave us our identities. These symbols convey a reminder of our brief yet meaningful presence in time. In my view, Within Nazca culture, there were esteemed master artists entrusted with the duty of creating these intricate representations. These skilled artisans, perhaps commissioned or honoring their guests, meticulously etched the symbols representing various tribes and cultures. Many in the creation of the Nazca lines, the artist cleverly mirrored the cycle of life itself, just as they initiated their drawings from a distinct starting point and meticulously etched the entire design without interruption. They conveyed a profound reflection on the human journey. Much like our existence, the lines symbolize a continuum. A journey that commences, unfolds, and ultimately circles back to its origin. Life, like the Nazca lines, begins and concludes in the same place, emphasizing the interconnectedness of our origin, our existence, and our ultimate return to where it all began. It definitely tells the story of precision and craftsmanship. I create caricatures of people on 11 by 14 paper with a Sharpie marker, which demands accuracy, leaving no room for error. Similarly, the Nazca lines drawn with meticulous precision on a grand scale reflect a remarkable feat with no margin for mistakes. These ancient artists had one chance to craft these intricate designs, showcasing their incredible skill and attention to detail. As we delve into the profound Nazca lines, we encounter an array of colossal geoglyphs etched into the Earth's surface, each bearing unique symbolism. Hummingbird Within the diverse array of geoglyphs, the hummingbird stands out, with its wings outstretched, oriented towards the northwest on the expansive canvas of the South American continent. This directional alignment serves as a symbolic link to its indigenous tribal roots. In the realm of the Aztec, The hummingbird soared not just as a bird, but as a celestial guide, beckoning them toward a promised haven. The hummingbird is a powerful and favorable messenger, carrying prayers to Creator. It is a symbol of good luck. It possesses the remarkable ability to travel long distances despite its challenges. It is said that her colors promote balance and healing. The hummingbird embodies spiritual wisdom. The astronaut. While in contemporary times, some may perceive this glyph as resembling an astronaut, it's crucial to recognize that people of Nazca in ancient times likely interpret this 
differently. Through my indigenous eyes, it is symbolizing a raptor, reflecting the cultural context of their era rather than futuristic concepts like astronauts from outer space. The monkey. The monkey portrayed in the Nazca lines embodies its distinct cultural significance, positioned to represent the people of the jungle in the Amazon. This glyph highlights the intricate connection between the monkey and the regional tribal identity. The Nazca monkey offers practical wisdom. The Nazca people, deeply connected to nature, may have interpreted the monkey's tail as a precursor to rain, showcasing their profound understanding of nature. Takuna people believe that the monkey is a sacred guardian of the moon, and local communities revere it for its seed dispersal. The Spider the spider glyph faces west on the South American continent, symbolizing the spirit of the spider. In some native sagas, a spider unfolds as a trickster and a teacher, with spider grandmother etching wisdom into creation myths. Mesoamerica spider maternal spirit, akin to a weaver of destinies, graces the narrative of the Teotihuacan. The tree, a tree-like figure with branches. Amidst this symphony of symbols, the kapok tree stands as a marvel, sacred to the Aztec and Mayan, a colossal bridge connecting heaven and earth and the enigmatic underworld upheld by its roots. The condor, the condor symbolizes power, spirituality, and the celestial world. Some tribes connect to the condor, believing it takes prayers to Creator. Within the Quechua and Amara cultures of South America, the condor holds significance as a symbol of the sky, often depicted in tribal art. Among the Mapuche people, the condor is revered as the king of birds, embodying the cardinal virtues of wisdom, justice, goodness, and leadership. Hands. Some people see this glyph as hands and a gesture of reverence. I perceive it as Chula Chaki. The Chula Chaki is a jungle imp in Quechua folklore. It derives its name from having dissimilar feet. Chula meaning different and Chaki meaning feet. Legend has it that this creature can shapeshift into anyone often impersonating loved ones, leading victims deep into the jungle before abandoning them disoriented and lost. In the guise of a playmate, the Chula Chaki preys on children, luring them into the jungle. To unmask this deceptive creature, one must examine its feet. It has one human foot and one animal foot. If exposed, the Chula Chaki escapes into the jungle, concealing its true identity. This could be a warning glyph, warning people to stay away from the Chula Chaki. The canine. The canine figure associated with loyalty, protection, and companionship. The discovery of dog bones in classic Maya burials support the belief that dogs played a role in guiding departed souls into the underworld during this period. In surviving Maya codices, dogs are portrayed carrying torches, symbolizing the tradition that associates dogs with bringing fire to humanity. Dogs have held a significant role in Mesoamerica folklore and mythology. A widespread belief throughout the Mesoamerica region is that a dog serves as the guide for the recently deceased, escorting them across a body of water in the afterlife. The Karankwa Indians residing along the Gulf Coast of Texas were believed to have bred dogs that remained silent. According to local accounts, the name Karankwa is thought to mean lovers of dogs. The whale. In the Mexica creation tale, 
A sea monster embodies chaos and destruction, and its encounter with the gods sparks a cosmic transformation, giving rise to the world. The sacrifice and dismemberment of this entity shaped the very features of the earth, connecting the divine and the terrestrial in a captivating narrative. The flower there are so many different flowers in Peru that are so beautiful. We will never really know which one is represented here. However, it could represent a Peruvian flower known as the magic tree to the Inca, Cantua Boxfolia, commonly referred to as the sacred flower of the Andes. It symbolizes the unity of the people. This evergreen climbing shrub originating from the mountainous regions of Chile, Peru, and Bolivia can quickly grow to 10 or more feet, sometimes reaching heights of 15 feet. The straight species features bright magenta flowers with blue pollen on the reproductive stalk, adding a distinctive accent. Varieties like sea hot pants display a combination of sunset orange tipped and hot pink, while sea golden Inca offers a softer hue with buttery yellow flowers that may develop peach tones in later blooming. Interestingly, a single specimen can produce flowers of different hues even within one season. The Lizard Within the rich tapestry of indigenous folklore, lizards emerge as revered figures with positive connotations. These creatures symbolize healing, survival, and masculinity. Some tribes involve sewing a newborn boy's umbilical cord into a lizard-shaped amulet, and it was practiced to ensure his robust health and strength. Some lizards are known to protect children. The trapezoid. The purpose of these trapezoids remains unclear. Some theories propose that they serve as ceremonial platforms or markers for underground water sources. As an indigenous artist, my unique perspective often leads me to unconventional ideas. I approach these symbols through the lens of indigenous cultures, seeking to understand the cultural representation they aim to convey. In my interpretation, I propose that these trapezoids symbolize the entrances of trapezoidal openings seen in Inca structures, akin to entryways leading to homes or hallways and windows. In Inca territories vulnerable to earthquakes, the prevalent use of trapezoidal shapes underscored the emphasis on stability and showcased a collective preference for this design. The trapezoid served as a national symbol akin to a seismic blueprint, a reminder for future generations in earthquake-prone regions to adopt the trapezoidal design for stability and security in construction. The parrot. This bird looks more like the long-waddled umbrella bird of Ecuador. However, it could also be Amaru, and giving this a more interesting twist. This depiction could represent the Andean mystical creature known as Amaru, which is a creature with diverse composite features. In Andean mythology, the Amaru is a mystical being, often depicted as a giant winged creature with diverse features, such as a puma's, condor's, or llama's head. It has wings, a snake's body, and a fish tail. In Inca mythology, Amaru is a serpent residing underground, symbolizing water, storms, hail, wisdom, rainbows, and the Milky Way. The Heron The portrayal of the Heron in the Nazca Lines features an exaggerated zigzag neck, indicating that it flies with its neck in an elegant S shaped adding to its allure. The deliberate exaggeration of the zigzag shape serves as a clear indicator to distinguish the heron from other long necked winged creatures, ensuring accurate 
recognition of the hair and figure it depicted. Revered for its graceful stature and elusive nature, the Kokoi heron symbolizes wisdom, patience, and a deep connection to the spiritual realm in various indigenous cultures. The heron in the Nazca lines infuses them with an aura of mystery and spirituality. Its presence suggests guardianship. The heron's feathers, used as regalia, further enhance its significance in ancient cultures. The pelican in the Aztec Mexica folklore, there was a lagoon where a special pelican lived, respected as the ruler of all birds. People believed it was the heart of the lagoon. When greedy hunters tried to capture it, the pelican summoned the wind, causing chaos and sinking their boats. Those who found treasures inside the pelican were rewarded while others faced dire consequences. The story teaches us to respect nature and live in harmony with it, to find true prosperity. The story of the pelican teaches us that greed and disrespect for nature can lead to negative consequences. By living in harmony with the environment and respecting its balance, we can find true prosperity and abundance. And this can speak for many things in life. There are a little over 800 glyphs at Nazca, with many more yet to be uncovered, I'm sure. This was just a minuscule glimpse from my indigenous interpretation of the Nazca lines aimed at providing an alternative viewpoint. I hope you found it intriguing and that it sparks some contemplation, encouraging a shift away from Eurocentric thinking towards embracing an indigenous perspective. Make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and the ring notification bell for my upcoming videos. This has been a Blue Wolf production.